We'll talk about the free agent market and where it stands today with J.P. Morosi, who joins us to speak of this Nolan Arenado discussion, which seems to be picking up a lot of steam. Initially, when it was reported that the Rockies would listen to Arenado discussion, we were like, what? The ink isn't even dry on the nine-year deal that they signed last spring training with much aplomb. And now they're talking about taking calls for a franchise cornerstone. Where is this discussion on this day, J.P.? Well, good morning, Matt and Ron. What I can tell you is this. After talking with a lot of sources over the last several days, there is a higher chance right now of a Nolan Arenado trade than either a Mookie Betts or Francisco Lindor trade. Right now, this is the best chance in baseball for a blockbuster deal is Nolan Arenado. And the team that I've heard the most in the last several days, the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals are a team that they've been looking for that big time bat to pair up with Paul Goldschmidt in the middle part of that lineup. Now, of course, they could still bring back Marcel Ozuna, but they, according to Derek Gold in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, they have liked Arenado now for more than a year, even previous to when Arenado signed that contract extension with the Rockies. And the Cardinals do have the right mix of pieces, I believe, to potentially entice the Rockies to make this deal. One name to watch here in a big way is Dakota Hudson, who had 16 wins for the Cardinals last year, led that staff in wins, but the one alarming spot is he also led the major leagues in walks, and walks are a major concern if you're pitching at Coors Field. So I think the big question there is, do the Rockies like Hudson enough to make him a major piece in this deal. Certainly, uh, his ERA was very good last year, but the peripheral numbers, again, were a bit of a concern. We do not believe Jack Flaherty is at all an option here. The Cardinals will not move him in probably any deal whatsoever. And Matt Carpenter could, when you think about the magnitude of Arenado's deal, Carpenter could be a very appealing player to go back to Colorado to help maybe balance out the money a little bit. He is due about $40 million over the next two years, and he does have a no-trade clause that begins this year. Now, there is some uncertainty right now, guys, if that no trade clause actually is in, already in effect right now here in the month of January or if it actually goes into effect on opening day. So some questions right there. But again, this general thought, of course, with Nolan Gorman possibly being a fit as well, going back to Colorado, Arenado for some combination thereof, Carpenter, Nolan Gorman, Dakota Hudson, these names at least are in play. And again, I, I was told at least some preliminary discussions between these teams over the weekend. JP, how big of a stumbling block would the opt-out in Nolan's contract be? Or is that something, if he were traded, that the team that traded for him could work around or through? Well, it's an excellent point, Ron. And that, that to me, the opt-out is a really key element here. Of course, it's an opt-out following the 2021 season, as you see it there. And that is where I have a hard time thinking, Ron, that, that a team is going to give up their absolute premier prospects for only the chance to have Nolan Arenado for two seasons. And the way around that, and we've seen it certainly happen in the past, where the players union prohibits players from giving up uh, value in a contract of which an opt-out clause is without getting something in return. They, they wouldn't just give it up for nothing, let's say. And I think that one way to get around that would be to give Arnado some additional money on top of what he has already due. It may be a quote-unquote nominal amount of money based on the overall magnitude of the deal, but there probably would have to be some type of incentive package or guaranteed money to add in there uh, to make it worth the while of Nolan Arnado. A final point in general on the no-trade clause, and if Arnado would waive that no-trade clause to go to St. Louis. I was told that Arnado has a very favorable view of St. Louis as a baseball market with the tradition there. Also, he has a lot of respect for Paul Goldschmidt. Of course, uh, that goes back to them playing in the NL West for a number of years. And also, and Matt, if he's going to love this, my WBC reference here, they were teammates on the 2017 team for Team USA, won gold medals together, and had a uh, great relationship back then. So again, on. it all comes <laughs> back, Matty V, okay. to the World Baseball uh, I Classic. Know, I know. You have the ability to do that. Uh, <laughs> let, let me uh, indulge me in about 20 seconds here while I poop all over that particular trade notion that somehow – a package of Dakota Hudson and Matt Carpenter, both very good players, nothing against them, is worth a Nolan Arenado. I mean, no chance. There's got to be a better deal out there for the Rockies for this reason. And I, and I love Matt Carpenter as a player, and Dakota Hudson is already a burgeoning star. You cannot roll the dice on how a pitcher is going to react being traded to Denver at the expense of a franchise cornerstone. You can't do that deal. 
No chance. Well, I think, Matt, there would have to be more added on Way to that. Maybe, more. Uh, and again, this would be a start. Yes. Giovanni Gallegos, I think, would be a really nice piece to go to Denver to help uh, stabilize the Rockies' bullpen. But you're right. And, and this is where that the amount of money that is involved in Arenado's deal is substantial. And if, if the Rockies are willing to take on all the money left on Carpenter's deal, you would have to expect that they were able to maybe leverage that and get a better prospect package coming back. I should point out quickly, the Rangers still have been involved uh, in talking with the Rockies about Arenado, and I was also told over the weekend that both the Rangers and the Cardinals have been more involved in talks with the Rockies than have been the Braves. And to your point, Matt, the Braves might have the best overall farm system of all, but again, they have not been as involved lately, I'm told, as the Rangers and Cardinals have been. Uh, let me tell you, if that if that deal happens as you just discussed it, I take my... Um Todd Helton jersey, and I sink it in the bottom of Dillon Reservoir, uh, just, I think, north of Denver proper. There's no, I'd be furious if that deal happened, and I'm a Rockies fan. All right, let, hey, let's move on to some of the hot names on the free agent market, the biggest names, and tick them off in order. I'll give you like 30 seconds on each of these guys. Donaldson, Castellanos, Ozuna. What's the latest? Well, the wait continues, I think, first and foremost, Matt, for Josh Donaldson, and the expectation is still in the industry that he ends up going back to Atlanta. Uh, but the longer the wait goes, this is how uh, I think the Donaldson market does overlap a bit with the Arnado trade talks because Nolan is, of course, playing the same position and a really attractive player for the long term. Again, I'll, I'll reiterate it there. It looks as though the Braves are the favorites to get Donaldson. Now, as it relates to Nick Castellanos, uh, a point to make on Castellanos, he had a very productive meeting with the Texas Rangers, and, and I was told he was very impressed with their overall vision, where they are at right now as an organization, of course, moving into a new ballpark. Uh, they have uh, a relatively low-cost upgrade that they've made overall to their starting rotation. So I think from that standpoint, Nicholas is looking at it in a, in a very discerning way to see where his best chance to win could be. And you think about the context of this week, are the Astros about now to to stumble backwards a bit, and is there now a greater opening in the American League West to have a great ball club there in Texas over the coming couple years? I think that maybe makes it a bit of a more appealing spot to be. And finally, Marcelo Zuna, report recently from the Dominican Republic in a newspaper there saying that Ozuna has effectively narrowed his top two choices down to the Cardinals and the Rangers. So again, the theme continues. Uh, if you're the Cardinals or Rangers, you have to feel right now pretty good about your chances depending on whatever happens with, with Arenado, but there are three players that, uh, maybe not so much Donaldson with St. Louis, but Donaldson, Ozuna, Castellanos, the market is there for you, and there may still be clubs lurking like the White Sox and the Reds, but if I'm a Cardinals fan or if I'm a Ranger fan, I feel really good about one of these major names joining my club between now and pitchers and catchers reporting about a month from today. Mm -hmm. Well, JP, certainly today, we need a little levity. So you talked about the burgeoning star in Dakota Hudson. Who's the burgeoning artist of the still life uh, picture behind you to you, right? <laughs> so that, that right there is my, my seven-year-old Gabriella. So usually it's five-year-old Elena who's doing most of the drawing. But Gabby wanted to get into the conversation. And in fact, Ron, she said, that's more of the Christmas tableau. So what we're going to work on getting something that is more of a <laughs> renewal of the spring season ahead. So I'm going to make sure that we commission that art here coming up. Okay. If your seven-year-old is already using words like tableau, then there is some higher education <laughs> happening in the Morosi home that uh, really has our But attention. There's actually been some heckling going on outside the door for my two-year-old. I don't know if you can hear in the background. She's been trying to, I think, try to find her way into this segment here, at least vocally. So I've talked to Lulu about making sure we, we have a little better auditory blockage uh, there on the outside of the, the Morosi office what? here in the basement. We don't want any blockage. We want we want everybody to participate in the Morosi home. JP, way to go, man. Uh, good to talk to you as always. My pleasure, guys. We're going to take so a much. break.